Hi and welcome to this online training video for Automation Studio. In this video, we'll be looking at the basics of proportional hydraulics. To do so, I'll be starting by building a basic hydraulic circuit with the same components as we use in the basic hydraulic video. But instead of inserting a on-off directional valve, I'll take one from the proportional hydraulics library. And to control it, I will need to have a joystick as well. I can resize. You can notice that the proportional hydraulic directional valve has two lines on the top and the bottom of it. So this way you know that it is a proportional hydraulic valve. You see the solenoid there has an arrow onto them, which means that they can be used in proportional mode as well. I can now connect my components. And now to assign the variables, I can double click on my directional valve. And when I go into variable assignment, I see all the internal variables that my directional valve has. So there are three main categories, the supply threshold channel, and the input signals on off mode and proportional mode. So to make sure to assign the proper solenoid, you can either click on the picture or browse the subcomponents tree here. And we will be wanting to assign the input signal that, that is a real, so it's a proportional mode, to one of our axes of our joystick. The joystick, now it has been filtered with a J. And JY is the alias of the joystick. And the X is for the X axis and the Y is for the Y axis. So I'll link it with my X axis of my joystick. Now as I go in simulation, I'll use the dynamic measuring instruments here to show the linear speed of the cylinder according to the command I give in my joystick. So if I give a li very little signal, you see the valve moves just a bit and the cylinder extends slowly. The, the bigger the command I give, the faster the cylinder will extend. So you, you see the proportional behavior of the directional valve. The more I move the joystick, the more the directional valve moves. Proportional behavior of the directional valve can be found if you go under the data sheet technical specification in the area of low curves. So this is the model of the directional valve. You can see all the relation in between different ports. So if I select the port 0 to port 1, the flow on spool travel relation is illustrated here. So I have a 12 liter by minute flow if my directional valve is completely to the end or I have an open center, so from about minus 10 to 10% travel, I also have the maximum flow, so about 12 lit liter by minute. And here, the more I reach minus 20% of travel, the less flow I'll have, and then the flow will start going up until maximum accordingly to this full travel. So all the different Relation is in between ports are illustrated with different color coding. Or you can choose there with the connectivity table as well. I can now open the first demonstration file. In this file, I can compare an open loop circuit with the closed loop command of my valve. So the open loop one is pretty much the one I we just shown in the first example, moving to the left and to the right accordingly to my comment. So pretty basic straightforward open loop comment. On my closed loop here, I have a controller that compares the signal 
and the position and then sends the signal to the directional valve to correct the error. So if I ask position of 7.4, the comment will be given in order to have a final position of 7.4. So this is made with the controller, the PID kind of control. And to do so, I link my position to my controller. I insert in my controller the comment. So the transmitter from the gauge where I give my comment minus the output signal position of my cylinder. And then the error is sent. Finally, so in this file, I can show you the effect of the controller on the position of my cylinder and the effect of changing some of its parameter. So as I control my cylinder in the x-axis here, we'll see on the plotter the command in blue or teal and the position in green. So with a proportional gain value of 4, if I change the value of my comment here, you'll see the comment and the, the position reacting. So if I put a proportional gain very high, so let's say about 9, see that it's going to move very fast and even overshoot a bit. If I reduce the value of my proportional gain to low value, say 1, and I reduce, it's going to reduce much more slowly. Finally, if you, you insert different kind of parameters, integral, derivative, then you can have the, you can design your controller with the overshoot and the damping that you may want. Thanks for watching this online training video for Automation Studio. We invite you to watch the other videos and we'd like to thank you for your time.